Good evening, people. Watch. I'm a 65 Lisa Voice. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works. At least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You put your, you admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. You put your faith and trust in him. And when you do that, you're saved, rapture ready, justified by the blood of Jesus, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means... You will not lose your salvation. Once saved, always saved. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. And the Holy Spirit will change you. This is... Uh, I got this off of several places. But I'm going to report it from the Washington Examiner. And this came out today. Zelensky. Now, I did something on this, I think, yesterday or the day before. Zelensky says Ukrainian forces will target Russian soldiers firing from a nuclear plant. So I guess the Zaporopa or Zaporoji plant. So it says Ukrainian forces will start targeting Russian soldiers who fire from the uh, Zaporozhia nuclear power plant according to the an announcement by Ukrainian President Zelensky. It says in a video address Zelensky repeated his accusations that Russia is using the ZNPP as a nuclear blackmail against Europe and claim once again that invading Russian forces are firing at their own positions in and around the plant. He added a new threat to Russian soldiers operating in the nuclear facility, saying they will now be targeted by Ukrainian forces. So every Russian military officer who enters, who either shoots at the plant or shoots under cover of the plant, must understand that he becomes a special target for our intelligence and our special services for our army, he warned. So Ukraine has fervently denied recently attacking the plant, accusing Russian forces of staging the attack themselves. Strikes by kamikaze drones were reported by Russian officials in July. Russia is accused by Ukraine of turning the ZNPP into a military base, using the threat of a nuclear disaster to shield its forces. Uh, Petro, I think his name is Petro Kotan, the head of uh, Inner Got uh, Gotem, told BBC that 500 Russians are stationed at the base with rocket launchers that fire at Ukrainian positions from the plant. The BBC reported that it could not independently verify his claims. Now, Ukraine and Russia have been going back and forth with the blame game over the shelling of a nuclear plant, something that International Atomic Energy Agency warned has caused a very real risk of a nuclear disaster. So uh, Vladimir Rogov, a council member for Russia's civil military administration at the Zaporozhye region, claimed on his Telegram channel almost daily attacks on the plant for the past week. He announced a recent attack with the title uh, Terror from the... Um, Ukro rank or something like that. They fired at themselves. So the council member claims that the attacks on the plant all come from Ukrainians. So the IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano said the plant remained 
as of now, okay. Base, uh, based on the most recent information provided by Ukraine, the IAEA experts have, prelim um, have preliminary assessed that there is no immediate threat to nuclear safety as a result of the shelling or other recent military actions. However, this could change at any moment. He told the United Nations Security Council, says, I ask both sides of this armed conflict cooperate with the IAEA and allow for a mission uh, of the Zaporoji nuclear power plant as soon as possible. Time is of the essence. Now, I just got this in from Hal Turner, and this just came in. like about half an hour ago. It says, according to what he's hearing, <clears throat> and I believe this, he's got sources that are telling him that the largest Russian air military operation in the last 30 years is being prepared in the next three weeks. Uh, the air operation will be allegedly carried out by massive aviation attacks. And this is going to take place within the next three weeks. Um, again, it says massive aviation attacks and close cooperation with ground formations and units of other branches of armed of the armed forces of the Russian Federation. So the scope and magnitude of what is planned will be a decisive movement in the Russian-Ukraine situation. So, Henry Kissinger you know who Henry Kissinger is. A lot of you are probably young. You probably don't know who Henry Kissinger is. He's former secretary, I think, for uh, Nixon. This is off of war news. He came out with this this morning. It says here um, he believes that the U.S. is currently on the brink of a war with Russia and China. We're on the brink of a war with Russia and China over issues that we partially created. He couldn't be, he, he's right. With no idea of how this is going to end or what it's supposed to lead to. He said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. Now I'm going to link this in the description box. I'm going to link all of this in the description box. Whatever... Whatever's going down between Russia and Ukraine right now, like I said, it's just starting. If they hit that power plant the right way, it's going to be a disaster. So Henry Kissinger is continuing to say we cannot now say that we will divide them and turn them against each other, he noted. All we can do not to escalate tensions, but also to create options for existing, for exiting the crisis. So regarding the Taiwan issue, Kissinger is concerned that the U.S. and China are heading for a deep crisis and advises Washington to show stability and restraint in its moves. <laughs> well, the policy implemented by both parties produced and enabled the development of Taiwan into autonomous democratic entity and maintained peace between China and, New and uh, U.S. for 50 years, he said. One should be cautious, therefore, about measures that appear to change the basic existing structure. Well, uh, Sleepy didn't get the memo on that, did he? No. Anyway, regarding the issue of Ukraine, he's made it clear that careless policies on the part of the U.S. and NATO have probably affected the crisis in Ukraine. They had no choice but to take Vladimir Putin's expressed security concerns seriously and believe it was a mistake for NATO to signal Ukraine to join the North Atlantic Alliance. He said, I think that Poland, all traditional Western countries, 
that have been part of the Western history made sense to be members of NATO, he said. But Ukraine, in his view, is a collection of territories once annexed to Russia that the Russians see as theirs, even though some Ukrainians do not take that position. That's what he's saying there. Now, I got something else, too. This is off of RT, and they're talking about the same thing. This all points to one thing. A nuclear disaster is... It looks, it, according to this, this nuclear disaster is almost imminent. All they have to do is make one false move. And I did a video on this yesterday, and, or either yesterday or Friday. Ukrainian nuclear site faces a new threat. So Kiev is flirting with disaster by shelling the hydroelectric facility that, ser that services the Zaporozhye nucle uh, nuclear plant, says local officials. So this, and like I said, this is off of RT. So the shelling of the hydroelectric power station by Ukrainian forces risk a nuclear catastrophe. And um, according to Zelensky, as quoted TASS TASS, the Kakhova is now operating in a very, very dangerous emergency mode. So, This thing could explode at any time. Just one shell hit the right way. And this is why I believe Hal Turner's report right here. Um, I don't know what this is going to do, but it sounds like Russia... is trying to do something to stop them from this thing happening. Because according to what I'm seeing here, the air operation will be allegedly, there's an air operation that's going to happen within the next three weeks. And the air operation will allegedly be carried out by a massive aviation attacks and close cooperation with ground formations and units of other branches of the armed forces of the Russian Federation. So it sounds like Russia is getting ready to do something before this gets out of hand. So we'll see what happens. Um, I will link this in the description box. Um, I will link the RT article and the... Um, War News 24-7 article in the description box as well. Anything else comes up, I'll, I'll be watching this. So if anything comes up, I will let you know. In the meantime, look at my uh, Telegram channel. It's uh, The uh, address to my Telegram account is in the description box also. And I will be back later. If anything else comes up, I will be back. Thank you.